All right. So I just got some results from my new, well, my old scale, some new results from my scale. It's called a fit track. It basically tracks like so many metrics. Um, I really actually love it. It tracks your bone mass, your uh, visceral fat, your subcutaneous fat, your um, muscle, everything. It tracks everything. It's amazing. Now, how accurate this thing is, I don't know. Um, you guys can look it up and decide for yourselves. But I've been tracking myself for a while now on different diets. Now, pretty much, I don't want to say vegan. I don't, I don't know. Let's say plant-based, very high plant-based. Let's say almost pretty much 100% plant-based. And before, in this picture, I was eating meat pretty regularly. This is me eating meat pretty regularly. Um, I don't know that I look that different, but I suppose I do. So that was me before. So this is me now. Kind of slimmer. I have lost weight since that last picture. I've lost a little over 10 pounds. Um, I think about actually 14, 13 to 14 pounds. So. Now, then, now, then. This is not a visual comparison, though. What I want to go over is the actual numbers. Let's talk about the actual numbers because, you guys, I lost muscle. I did. I lost muscle. Going from this to this, I lost muscle. Let's talk about that. I actually did not have an actual um, record of my old stuff, except for in a video. Luckily, I put up this panel here on the left in a video and it showed my old stats because for some reason when I re, I had to like re-download the app, they came up with a new app and it lost all my old information, which is sad. Um, but I had that, I had that one picture and then I just took a more recent picture. This was weeks ago maybe and let's look into it so I have less information on the left here because I didn't take a full on picture but my weight on the left I calculated it backwards and it was about 156 point something maybe five 156 and a half maybe almost almost 157 not quite okay and now I weigh about 143 pounds so it's about it's about 13 to 14, not quite 14 pounds difference. Not huge, but going from basically an omnivore eating whatever I want to a high carb vegan. I would say there's differences between high carb and me eating more fat. Um, I think I go more towards what the, the results I had as an omnivore. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but being on a high carb plant-based diet on in the black Versus being on a, I don't know what to call it, Weston Price, I guess, omnivore in the white there on the left. Okay, so uh, let's start with um, subcutaneous fat. Why not? Subcutaneous fat used to be 24.5% and is now down uh, here, 22%. So subcutaneous fat went down by 2.5%. My visceral fat here has gone to three. It's gone from six to three. Now I know people are gonna say, but you need visceral fat. Let's talk about that a little. So I have searched high and low for, can you have too low visceral fat? And all I came up with was like a Quora forum article. And these are people who aren't scientists or anything, they're just, people given their opinion, which I know some people value that, but I, <laughs> I, on the other hand, I need it to come from a credible source. All I've ever found is stuff about visceral fat being dangerous for your health, too much of it. Um, it's different than subcutaneous fat. It surrounds your organs and here's intestines, kidney, visceral fat right here. See all that surrounding your organs? And it's a type of body fat that lies deep within your abdominal walls and surrounds your organs. Some levels of visceral, 
visceral fat are healthy and help protect your organs. However, too much visceral fat can be dangerous for your health. Since visceral fat is sometimes called active fat because it plays an active role in how your body functions, too much visceral fat can lead to serious health issues such as diabetes, heart disease, stroke. Again, what is visceral fat? It wraps around your organs. Um... Too much of any body fat is bad for your health, but compared to the fat that lies just underneath your skin, which is called your subcutaneous fat, the visceral kind is more likely to raise your risk for issues, heart disease, Alzheimer's, high cholesterol, stroke, diabetes. Researchers suspect that visceral fat makes more of certain proteins that inflame your body's tissues and organs and narrow your blood vessels. So it causes more inflammation because it's right there at your organs. It causes the inflammation near your organs, which is not a good thing. Um, Now, there's different ways to measure your visceral fat. Um, So the way my program measures it, it's on a scale of like one to like like 50 maybe or something. And from one to 13 is healthy. It's considered low and healthy. Um, Actually, I think below nine is low actually. And low in this case is good. You don't want, in the case of visceral fat, down to a one is considered healthy. Down to a one. So I'm at a three now. And past a nine is considered standard, I guess average for the average person, but past 13 is considered unhealthy. This is what I've read in different areas, but that's what my scale does. So my visceral has dropped from a six to a three. That's crazy. That's a huge difference. Um, just in visceral fat. So that is protective against disease. Whether you want to argue with me on that, I'm sure people will be arguing that you need it to protect your organs, that you need it for hormones and da, 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 da. You need some, but you don't need that much. I think people overestimate how much you need to protect the organs. But anyway, So muscle mass, this is the thing that I was like, oh my gosh, my muscle mass has gone from 108.9 down to 103 down here, 103. So 108.9, so almost 109 down to 103. That's like a six pound difference, six pounds of muscle. So out of around 13 or 14, just under half of what I lost was muscle. Let's say it's 13. So yeah, just under half. However, something that I then looked at is this thing here, muscle rate. I don't know why they call it rate. Because what it is, is it's basically taking a percentage of how much muscle you have. So you take your overall weight and you take your, the amount of muscle you have and you get a percentage So out of my weight, my muscle rate, the percentage of muscle I have in my body has gone from 69.6 up to 72.1. So what that means is that overall, I've increased the amount of muscle to my body mass, to my weight. I have more muscle to weight, a higher muscle to weight ratio, let's say. Even though I've dropped muscle, and fat, but muscle as well. I now have more muscle for the amount of weight I have on my body, if that makes sense. Um, Some other parameters that if that, uh, let's look at, I guess, protein mass has gone from 27.3 pounds to 26 down here, 0.2. So it's gone down a little bit. Protein rate has gone up for some reason, it's gone from 17.5 to 18.4. <laughs> Don't know why. Um, I think that's the rate at which you're gaining protein or something like that. So that's gone up, <laughs> which makes sense because now I have more muscle to my weight. Um, just for, for clarification at the top here, um, you can see Uh, so weight, it says control because it wants me to be 138.9 pounds. 
and I'm not. So <laughs> my scale has different goals for me. <laughs> I don't know if um, people agree with this, but it wants me to be even leaner than I am. Um, my bone mass is 6.6 .6 pounds. It's always been 6.6 .6 pounds. It's never changed throughout every single time I've measured it. It's always been 6.6. .6. My body water seems to be good. Um, yeah. And that's about all the metrics I have on here. So yeah. So even though I did lose muscle and oh, another thin thing I want to mention about these two measurements is both times I was sedentary, pretty much like not sedentary, sedentary, like let's say I'll go for walks and stuff, but I'm not, I don't have an intensive workout regime at the moment. I kind of cut back, let's say recently and haven't been doing as much. I'll go for like a long walk once a week. Um, long being like two hours, like a two hour walk. It's a good walk, but it's not like intense, you know, uh, other than that, it's walking, it's walking. And before I think I would go on hikes and stuff. I was, I was pretty sedentary as well. Not sedentary, sedentary, but you know what I mean? Like I'm not trying to actively build muscle, I suppose. It's just like aerobic exercise. Yeah, both times. So uh, I wanted to mention that because I think maybe you'd get different results, maybe if you're weight lifting or whatever, but I think that's important um, to note. So yes, I absolutely did lose muscle as a vegan. I also lost visceral fat and subcutaneous fat, making me actually more muscular <laughs> in essence. Um, because the ratios have changed. So technically, I would say my metrics have all gotten better despite the muscle loss. Yes, it's unfortunate. We'd all love to be 109 pounds of pure muscle, <laughs> which I wasn't, but 109 pounds of muscle as opposed to 103, sure. But um, but now my ratio is better. So health-wise, as in terms of health parameters, I feel as though it's better. So, I don't know, more muscle, but also more fat, less fat, but actually a better muscle ratio, but actually less muscle, <laughs> if that makes sense. There you have it. Real, honest results going from meat eating, let's say Weston A. Price diet to a high carb, plant-based, pretty much like plant-based vegan, let's say, but plant-based diet with no animal products. 